This is our tenth and final video in our series about building a website. This time we're going to focus on the idea of frameworks and in particular Bootstrap. So far we've designed our aging, web, uh, aging surfers website and we have done three things. We've kept it stupidly simple, we've separated out concerns and we've ensured that you don't repeat yourself. We've also included a PHP INI file to make menu generation easy. But as it happens, it also makes it very easy to reuse our code for other simple websites. If we look at it, we have an incredibly simple uh, setup. We have one PHP content page for each web page on our site. And at the moment, we have a library subdirectory with just six files in it controlling our page template. So let's see what this looks like. Here's three examples which all look very different but they were all generated in an actually a very short period of time, a part of a morning and some of these examples were easier to develop than others. It really depends on how complex the required CSS is. Now designing simple pages isn't that hard. Designing submenus in CSS is more challenging, especially when we're designing pop-up submenus for mobile. That is quite hard. Designing carousels, modals and other fancy things is all possible in CSS3 and quite fun to do if you like that sort of thing, but it is hard. You can puzzle for quite a while about exactly what's going on and why it's not doing quite what you meant it to we can make our lives much easier by using a CSS framework like Bootstrap. So let's consider a Bootstrap how-to. You can actually get plenty of help through things like the W3 schools, but let's look at the key issues here. First of all, you can either download Bootstrap or access it via a content delivery network. We'll assume that we're going to be using a content delivery network. Do make sure that what you're using is the latest version and at the time of making this video in late 2017 the latest version is version 4 beta. Now you need to set up your page template so the first thing is particularly with Bootstrap 4 beta you must include the viewport meta line that we thought about in previous videos that's the bit that makes your site responsive or at least allows you to make it responsive I should say uh, and that has to be in there. Bootstrap can't do that for you. You have to do that. You then need to connect to the Bootstrap content delivery network. That's a simple one-liner in the head statement of your temp page template. And if you think you're going to need it, you might also want to connect to the JavaScript libraries. Uh, and that will also come through the content del delivery network. You might need one or more of those libraries. Uh, I've put the lot in just so you know you've got everything there. And once you've done that, you can now start to play. Bootstrap is a library of class-based styles, so you can actually apply these styles to whatever elements you like. So you might see examples around where you've got div this or uh, whatever uh, with various styles. in. You don't have to copy the examples exactly. Think about what you want to do, think about the styles that are coming in through Bootstrap and think about what element you might want to apply that style to. That's particularly important because Bootstrap has been around for a while and there is an abundance of examples out there that are still XHTML orientated. So when you see all these examples with zillions of divs and slash divs and, and unordered lists and spans and who knows what else, you don't have to do it. Think about what you want to do with your HTML5 and then just apply the styles to the HTML5 elements and it will all work perfectly. Now let's think about our Aging Surfers website. Um, what I've done here is, uh, just for the sake of doing it, so that one can look at the idea of the bootstrap templates, I've actually torn up the Aging Surfers design altogether and instead used the standard bootstrap 
what's called narrow jumbotron template, just one that I happen to think is quite nice. In passing, we might note that the, but somewhere between Bootstrap 4 Alpha and Bootstrap 4 Beta, narrow seems to have been defined so that narrow is actually exceedingly wide. But if you go wide enough on the narrow jumbotron template, you can see the responsiveness working by moving from one column to two columns, which is quite nice. Let's have a little think about bootstrap pros and cons. So what, what do we reckon about this? Well, a bootstrap design will always look professional. It will always be mobile first and it will always be cross-browser compatible, as accessible as one can make it, and uh, all the other things that you look for in a professional design Bootstrap will always deliver those for you. You can always mess it up, of course, but uh, fundamentally the, the, the Bootstrap code will encourage you to go down those routes. It is powerful and flexible, but I do need to know the library, so there is some overhead in terms of getting to know the Bootstrap library and how it works first. But one crucial issue is if you need a carousel or modal, then why on earth reinvent the wheel? You can do carousels and modals in CSS3 and it is fun, but why do it? However, if I do bring in Bootstrap, I have significantly increased my code overheads and you might want to think about that. So in this particular version, so with each of these videos I'm producing a, um, a little code zip file uh, so that you can download it and play with it yourself. And I've put in the Bootstrap, CDN and the JavaScript and everything else. But each one of those lines, even if you're not using them, will make the connection and will add to the overheads in terms of the time it takes for the page to download and so on. So you might want to think about that. You probably don't need the JavaScript for a lot of the basic Bootstrap stuff, so why bring it in and increase your download time uh, in your page? Now, as a general rule, it is easy to include Bootstrap via a CDN, so Bootstrap itself is just a one-liner. So I could use my.css or surfers.css in our aging surfers case, and then use that together with Bootstrap for the bells and whistles. So, for example, I might go back to my original design for aging surfers, and then decide somewhere along the line, suppose I don't like carousels personally because of the not on home pages because of the implications of time it takes to download and, and just general resources issues. Um, but if you wanted a carousel on the home page, just use Bootstrap to, to produce that alongside my CSS. And that seems a, a satisfactory approach to me at least. So where have we got to? Well, in this series, we have focused on developing good practice. In passing, we seem to have ended up with a little reusable framework, and this framework can also leverage the power of something like Bootstrap, which seems like a pretty useful package to me, and I have to say that actually I have used this package for several years now in virtually all of my web website development, and it's not let me down at any point. I hope it's been helpful for you, and just want to say thank you for watching. And that's all, folks.